Hello, I'm Captain Andrea. And I'm Commander Matthew. And welcome to Trek Back Tuesday. This is a series on Nerd News Today where we seek out new toys and new merchandise from all across the Trek universe to spend our credits on. And today we're looking at one of the members of the House of Moog. Kurt? Well, the non-alcoholic member of the House of Moog. Alexander. The non nebishi member of the... How about, how about a guy who's going to be joining the House of Martok later on? Alexander. That's Tourette's dog. No, no, <laughs> no. We're looking at Lieutenant Worf today here in Trek Back Tuesday. It's so much fun to do that to him. Lieutenant Worf from the USS Enterprise, the first Klingon to serve in Starfleet. And this is Worf's first action figure as done by Playmates as part of their launch series in 1992 for the TNG line. Commander Matthew, tell us more about the packaging. Hi, Captain. So as you can see here, this is the normal style that we've seen for all the Playmates toys so far in Series 1 with the Enterprise coming out. And we have a blister here with Worf where you can easily see it's a nice window of all the accessories that he will come with. And this is an unpunched figure, in fact, which makes it a little bit more collectible. Uh, or, or at least it was until... <sighs> another kill for the Captain, I see. Damn right. On the back of the package, you'll see the other characters that are involved in this wave. You'll see a description of his accessories. And you'll see his Starfleet personnel file. So what's also interesting to note here is that we see a picture of Worf uh, with the accessories. I think that's basically showing us how we're supposed to stand him up because this <laughs> Worf, just like the Riker, has some funny legs. Oof. Yeah. Of course, Worf would. Yeah. Had to be different. <clears throat> Commander Matthew, prepare to beam Worf out. Hi, Captain. Lieutenant Worf is on deck, reporting to duty, Captain. Oh, Worf. You poor, poor Klingon. I, I don't know if his legs were malformed from the transporter, but I think that might just be the way he came out of the package. I think it was as well, and, um, oof, Worf. This is Jerry Lewis, the newest member of the House of Moog. <laughs> so according to the package, his legs are actually meant to be a little bit more of a dynamic pose uh, all the time, which is really annoying, but that's how this first line was. Uh, he's meant to be kind of like in this, I guess he meant to actually be on the base, in fact. So I guess we're going to whip that out right now. Uh, but yeah. It's all about the base. It really is with Worf. For whatever reason, they made his legs really, really funny. So yeah, you have to ha basically have him on the base, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. He's doing a better Riker maneuver than Riker did, though. I was thinking that as well. Yeah. Do I need to bring the chair out? No, I'm no. not okay with that. Oh, okay. I will say that what his uh, positioning lacks... They do make up for it to some degree in his face. Yeah, the face is a very good representation of Worf. It looks a lot like Michael Dorn. It is very Worfy. It's a very Worfy Worf face. It really is. I mean, when you consider what action figures were like back then, I mean, some of them were really cool and interesting, but you couldn't do the detail work that you can do with figures now. So to capture it like this is really a testament to how good Playmates was and still is. Yeah, I mean, the sculpt thing is top-notch for this war figure, and you can't ignore the paint job either. There's very good paint detailing on his ridges, on his forehead, on his nose. His teeth. His teeth, especially. Uh, they put a lot of effort onto the face. Of course, the back of the head, eh, not so much. Uh, well, Worf's hair back then was kind of funky to begin with, so, eh. But I love what they did with the sash. I think that is really standout. Yeah, that part looks very good as well. There's just a lot of really nice little good paint touches all over this figure. Yeah. However, one of the downsides of the figure is that articulation. This yeah. is bad. This is very bad. So besides the fact that he pretty much has to stay on this at all times, you know, he's got good articulation, to be honest, in terms of, like, what the joints do and how many there are. But again, it is that awkward Playmates kind of joints where they have the weird V legs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can see here Worf doing a kung fu kick. <laughs> Um, you know, basically, he can do this odd yoga stance that most other toys can't do. And also, when you consider that he has to keep his leg in that one position, all he really needs is a top hat, and he can do some uh, Klingon Broadway. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime guy. I mean, it's not perfect. We don't have a hat to play with, but, you know, you get the picture. Now, luckily, the one good thing about this odd articulation is his wrists and the fact that they're positioned in a way that he can easily hold most of his accessories. Oh. Which is good, because speaking of accessories, let's bring some of them out. Here you have his tricorder. It's the same as all the others, just a different color. It fits in his nice little pocket right here. It's a Starfleet regulation holster, Captain, not pocket. Eh, we're going to call it a pocket. You say holster, I say pocket. I'm right, because I'm the captain. Yes, Captain. I'm sorry, Captain, for doubting you. So it moves, which I was not expecting. Yeah, we haven't actually mentioned that yet, but those do move for some unknown reason. 
Uh, I don't quite know why. I don't think they come out, but with enough force, you probably could yank them out. But yeah, for some odd reason, this piece actually does move, just because I guess how it's attached in there. Yeah, and I do want to point out, since I just moved his arm, I love the detail on his hand, because they made the hands look like the actor's hands. Yes. I, I think they did a phenomenal job of that. Like, you really get the vibe. You can you can practically see the veins on this hand. Yeah, really good sculpting. They had a great sculpting team of Playmates back in the early they 90s. They really did. Okay, moving on from accessories. Worf comes with a Type 2 phaser. Awesome little stream of... Zap. Ah. <laughs> well, let's see if that fits in his hand, which I believe it actually sure. does on this hand right here. So that's pretty easy. But unfortunately, the way his hands are sculpted and everything, it is kind of awkward to hold. I mean, it's, you know, you can get a little bit of a dynamic Oof, pose, I guess, but because eh, the wrists don't move, it's kind of hard to do much. So he's basically just going to be shooting from the hip or having a lightsaber battle with Darth Vader. <laughs> He'd probably enjoy that. Yeah. He also comes with a sword. That looks like it's giving everybody the middle finger. So this looks like a Klingon toothpick to me. Yeah, either way, it doesn't have a name. They just call it a sword. Yeah, I think they kind of made this one up for the toy line. It's a cool looking sword. I mean, I, I like the detail on it. I like the jagged, well not jagged, I like the imperfect edges. It's a very rustic weapon. Yes, rustic's a good way to describe it. You know, this is the, this is the weapon of a warrior. And if there's any Klingons right now watching this video, do let us know what is the proper name for that sword. Yes, please. Speaking of Klingon pronunciations, Worf also comes with this Klingon dagger, or as it's pronounced, the Daktach. Lovely pronunciation, Captain. Yes. However, if there are any Klingon language masters out there, please let me know if I pronounced that correctly. I really like this dagger. I like the decorative details that it comes with for such a small piece. Again, Playmates is just really doing a great job with the details. Now, funny... Funnily enough about this particular accessory, is you can see in the back of the packaging, it looks a little bit different in terms of its shade. That's because the original prototype was actually painted silver, or they were going to use silver plastic for this. Instead here, they went with everything just being one shade. So just kind of interesting that they made that choice towards the end. That was a choice they made with a lot of the Klingon weapons, as we'll see later in I Season believe... 1. Series 1. I believe throughout the rest of the series, the, the Playmates series, that's what they stuck with. That they would just do the accessories in one color. Just unless one color, it, yeah. Unless it had a sticker decal or something very specific that it needed to have a color on. Yeah. Well, let's actually try and get this into Worf's hand because I don't think this is actually going to fit. It's basically only, it looks like it's meant to go in this hand because that's got the hand that appears to fit this. But uh, upon closer examination, this one doesn't really fit because it's very soft. Uh, yeah. It's actually bending. So I'm a little afraid oh. to put it deeper into that hand because this is just very, very tight hole. So I might need to heat up the hole or something. I don't quite know, but I will try his other hand with this dagger. It should hold it, but it's going to be loose. Okay. But it looks oh, all right. Yeah, it's not the worst. I think you could also get his sword easily into this hand as well. Like this, it's actually very much made for that. You can see that's in, yeah, that looks good. Oh, I like that a lot better. Yes. Yeah. You might have to remove that because we do have one final, we do have one final accessory for Worf because no Klingon is complete without his Batleth. That's right, Captain, because Worf always brings his Batleth to protect Picard. Damn right, he's better than Yar. Damn right, he's better than Yar. So let's go ahead and try and get this Batleth in his hand as well. So another interesting fact, this was in the original prototype phase, also meant to be a two-toned weapon. The metal parts would have been metallic, and these would have actually been the same color. But again, once they hit production, for whatever reason, most likely cost-cutting, yeah. they decided to get rid of that. But he can hold it very, very easily, Ooh. and it looks very good on him. I like this. I like this the best, I think. Yeah, it looks way better than all the other accessories. Now he looks like he's ready to get into a fight. Yes. Though traditionally, the battle is held with two hands. That is true, which you cannot really do. No, you his can. hand is just ready to put a bottle, I guess, in, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. So, Captain, final thoughts on Lieutenant Worf? Good-looking figure. It's a very good-looking figure. I hate the stance. I like that it's dynamic in the pose, but for playability's sake, it's not great. I mean, who, who wants a figure that can do that? It's almost as though they were thinking maybe one day this will be a collector's item. So that's why they created it that way. So it'll be on the base and you can have it posed. But they forgot that this is really a toy that's meant to be played with by young kids. I would love to know what the thought process was behind that. Uh, as for the accessories, love them. They look great. They're interesting. Um, they add something different to the other you know, to the other collection of accessories that we've seen. One of the things I did like about Klingons in general and Worf in general in Next Gen, he just added something different. You know, it wasn't the same sterile stuff, Starfleet stuff that we kept seeing. So overall, I'm I'm most pleased with this. I'm mostly happy with this Worf as well. There were other Worfs that, there, well, there'll be plenty of other Worfs that come out in the future Absolutely. in this series, but this will be basically one of the last ones with this 
scheme, this color outfit, in fact. We'd have to wait a little bit longer for a season one style outfit, in fact, with the, with the reddish purple colors. But yeah, I mean, I like this. It looks great on display like this, mm -hmm. but as a playable toy, eh, it's not so good. No. He, he really can't hold himself up, and when he does stand up straight, he looks like Jerry Lewis. So that's our look at Lieutenant Worf from Playmates' first series of Star Trek Next Generation figures from 1992. So I am Commander Matthew. I'm Captain Andrea. We'll see you guys next time with another episode of Trek Back Tuesday. And until then, live long and buy toys.